Um, so can you just start by telling me a little bit about yourself and how you got into robotics? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Julia Collins, I'm born and raised in San Francisco, California. I've always been a huge nerd. I've always loved anything that had to do with math or science or technology. But the thing that I always loved even more than that was food. Um, and it really comes from my family history. So my grandfather moved to the Bay Area during a time called the Great Migration. This is when southern black people moved to northern cities to take advantage of economic opportunities. And this was a time also during segregation. Have you guys heard about segregation? This was a really terrible dark time in our past when people were separated based on race. So if you were a black person, you couldn't go to a restaurant that catered to white people. If you were a white person, you were discouraged from interacting with somebody who was Asian or black or brown. It's really even hard to imagine these days that that could be possible, but that was the reality for my family when they moved to the Bay Area. Well, my grandfather was a dentist, and he accepted everyone. It didn't matter what color you were. My grandfather would come and help you, help you with your teeth. And so our family became like the center of the community because we accepted everyone. We brought everyone in. And when you do that, a funny thing happens. You start to just learn a lot about different people. One of the ways that I learn about people is through food. And so like the, the nicest thing anyone can do for me is to invite me over to their house for dinner. And I think in learning about someone's food, you learn about their history, you learn about their culture, you learn about what they like, what they don't like, what they've seen in the world. And so I've always had this dual passion for science, technology, math, and food. And I guess it's probably no surprise that I grew up and became the founder of a robot pizza company. So can you just talk a little bit about Zoom, the restaurant, and how you came up with the idea? Sure. So um, most of you know that by the year 2050, there are going to be 9.7 billion people living on planet Earth. That's a huge increase from the number of people that are living today. And one of the things that I spend a lot of time thinking about is, what is everyone going to eat? <laughs> How do you feed 9.7 billion people? And the reason why I stay up at night thinking about it is because the way that we're doing it now just won't work. Mm -hmm. We're using fungicides and pesticides and herbicides, the result of which is creating this huge ecological crisis. We have what are called dead zones in our ocean where the runoff from these chemicals is threatening our fish population. We have global warming, which is largely the result of overconsumption of beef in North America. And so there's so many ways that we're farming and that we're creating food that are really hurting our planet. And so what I want to do is create not just the restaurant company of the future, but the food company of the future. And this is a future where we can farm in a way that's not only sustaining our planet, but also restoring our planet, starting to turn back the hands of time and bring more health and more joy to our planet. So that's kind of the mission of Zoom. We started with pizza because everyone loves pizza. That is, <laughs> I'm probably the biggest pizza. What's biggest. your favorite pizza? Um, I like pizza with artichokes and basil. Nice. It's a very like, weird thing. Kind of fancy, very cute. <laughs> Very California, yeah. I mean, um, I love I love so many kinds of pizza. And if you ever have a chance to download the Zoom Pizza app or look at our website, you'll see that we created a menu that's really inspired by the produce that we love from California. So. How many people love sweet corn? Do you guys eat sweet corn in sweet corn season? Have you ever had a pizza with sweet corn? How was it? <laughs> really good, right? So we were really inspired by that. But what we saw when we started this pizza company is that our competitors, Domino's, Pizza Hut, Papa John's, Little Caesars, um, they weren't necessarily focused on using ingredients that were fresh and that were local and were seasonal. So we thought, as much as we admire these other companies for certain things that they do, how many of you eat Domino's pizza? Papa John's, 
Pizza Hut, little so not so many in this room. Um, I hope you'll eat Zoom pizza in the future. But it's very good. <laughs> what we wanted to do was we wanted to win you as customers by giving you something that was healthy, that was delicious, that was fresh, and that was made mm -hmm. with love. So yeah. that's the that was the idea behind Zoom Pizza. And how did you come up with the idea of combining robots and people to make the pizza? Yeah. So this is this is interesting. So um, I think. When you have an idea, you have a couple of choices about how to move forward. One way that people like to work is to do research on things that are similar, mm -hmm. right? So you might look at a pizza company and say, well, here's another pizza company. How do they do this? How do they do that? My business partner and I decided to just completely do the opposite. We decided to start with a totally blank slate and then just rewrite every rule. One of the rules that we wanted to rewrite was that jobs in the fast food industry had to be low paying or not have benefits. And I didn't want to start a company where the people that worked for me couldn't afford to live or couldn't afford health insurance or to start families. And so I looked at automation as a way to create jobs that were better, safer, and higher paying. So at Zoom, we have humans and robots working side by side. And that enables us to create these jobs where somebody's not, for example, sticking their hand in and out of an 800 degree pizza oven you know, 100, 200 times a day. And so that was kind of the beginning. It wasn't so much just because I love robots, although I really love robots. <laughs> it was more so thinking about what do people need, what's good for human beings, and then looking at technology as a way to improve the quality of, of human life. Yeah. And can you just tell us a little bit about the robots that are there and their different jobs? Yeah, sure. I wish I had a video, but I'll, try, I'll talk with my hands and I'll describe it. So, um, how many of you have ever made a pizza? What's the first thing you have to do? What's that? The dough. The dough, the dough, right? You have to usually start like with a dough ball and then you have to stretch it out. So you start with like this little kind of puffy dough ball and then you like spin it and you pat it and you smush it. It's actually a really hard job. Um, the dough can fall on the floor. <laughs> you can spin the dough and drop it. You can put your finger through it. So the first thing that we looked at automating was the process of actually stretching the dough ball. And so we created a robot, um, two twin, actually one robot um, that presses the dough. And that robot is called Leonardo because it's fun to name <laughs> robots Italian names. And then we thought about the next step, which is actually putting the sauce on. And that's not necessarily a difficult job, but it's pretty boring. You know, to spend your day just going boop, 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 yeah. boop, boop. So in one case, a robot solved a job that was difficult. In the next case, a robot solved, solved a job that was really boring, putting on sauce. And so we have twin robots named Giorgio and Pepe. And their entire job is to put sauce on the, on the pizza. Then you have to spread the sauce around, right? <clears throat> Which is, again, not a job that's terribly difficult, but relatively boring. And so we have a robot that has a hand that looks like a little ladle. And she spins and spins and spins. Her name is Marta. And she spreads the sauce. <laughs> and then the next stop is actually done by human beings. And that's putting all the toppings on. And that's because this is a job that's actually pretty joyful and that human beings are very good at. We have a huge variety of pizza on our menu. It means that we have, at any one time, as many as 60 individual ingredients. Wow. Basil, and artichoke, and mushrooms, and peppers, and right, so many. It's, it's almost like painting with, um, it's almost like you're creating a canvas with lots of different colors of paint. And so that's a really joyful process. It's, it's um, not the same every time. It's not repetitive. And so we human beings like doing that job, so human beings do it. Mm -hmm. The next step is really difficult. It's taking the pizza and putting it into an 800 degree oven. It's a very hot oven. It's also really hard to move pizza once it has sauce and toppings. It's kind of heavy and wet and flexible. And so we have a robot named Vincenzo, I'm sorry, Bruno, that takes the, Bruno, that takes the pizza and puts it into the oven. And then the final step of taking 
out of the oven, I'm going to get to your question, um, and putting it into the box. That's done by one more robot, robot, and his name is Vincenzo. Has the value of your company gone up because you have Italian names? Because <laughs> I feel like I would, eat a co I would eat pizza from a company with Italian robots. You know, I used to live, um, after I graduated from business school, I moved to Italy, and I went to live on a water buffalo farm. Whoa because I really wanted to learn about this area of the world and because I love cheese and I especially love buffalo mozzarella. So it just made sense. And they had 1,000 water buffalo living on this farm and every single water buffalo had an Italian name. Ludovico, Leonardo, Vincenzo. And I thought it was so charming that I decided to use the same idea. Can I answer your question? Uh, I am a dog named Ludo. Oh my gosh, what kind of dog? Oh, they're so smart. <laughs> it's a good name, Bruno. Yeah, and why should there be more automation in restaurants? You know, I think the important thing is to think about how technology can serve humans. Mm -hmm. What can technology bring us that makes our lives better? And there are frankly a lot of jobs in restaurants that are dangerous. Jobs like putting your hand in and out of an oven or slicing something, right? Mm -hmm. Jobs that are very repetitive folding the same box 25,000 times, or jobs that are just plain old boring. Yeah. And so what we think at Zoom is that using robots collaboratively with humans, so not robots to replace humans, but robots to work collaboratively, that we can make jobs that are better for humans while the robots do the things that are boring, repetitive, and unsafe. And where do you see Zoom going in like 10, 15 years? Gosh, well, first of all, I'd like to get more pizza to more people. Yeah. And so the world, um, always needs more the world always needs more really good pizza yes. that's actually affordable. Mm -hmm. um, I also love the idea that I can create jobs that are really good for humans. Mm -hmm. And so the more pizza I serve, the more jobs I can create. And so I think in the next 15 years, what you'll see is Zoom Pizza having a presence internationally and also Zoom's technology being used by other companies. What's your question? Sometimes when you're cutting up pizza, you might get like a little cut. Exactly. It's not easy to cut pizza. Do you cut it sometimes with a wheel? And that's kind of hard. So we actually invented a pizza cutter that's designed to cut the pizza into eight perfect slices. Um, and that's also self-cleaning. Our pizza also goes into a box that's made from sugarcane fiber instead of paper, so it's totally compostable. So there are all these ways that you can use technology and innovation to create better, better products. Do you have a question? The great thing about robots is they're so strong and they're built from these materials that they don't actually feel the same kind of damage that the human body would. So a robot's hands are usually made from stainless steel or really strong materials, and so they're actually designed to go in the fire without any, without any issue. Are That's exactly right. The metal's not going to set on fire. Once in a while, the robots malfunction, and they might drop a pizza onto the floor. But all you have to do is go in and reset, and you're back in business. No, the interesting thing about the cutter is that the blades are designed to fall through the surface of the pizza just perfectly so that it doesn't cut the box below and it only cuts the pizza. And we had to really, we had to first imagine what a, a pizza cutter could do that was different than anything we'd ever seen. Then we had to sketch it out and then we created some rough, what we call prototypes. You guys know what prototypes are. And then we tested them, and then we made little changes, and we tested them over and over again, just so we could make sure that it would cut perfectly. So um, would you like to walk us through your slides? Yeah, actually, give me a moment, because I want to show a sure. video. I'm going a little bit off script here. And I'm going to see if I can quickly find. Hold on a second. 
Actually, why don't we go to the exercise? Because I think I covered a lot of the slide material already. Um, do you both have any other questions that you'd like to ask Julia? And then I'd love to ask you a couple of questions. So we're going to go one, two, three. How do the robots, um, how are they able to have fire on their hands? Because the, the material that they're made of is so strong that it actually can sustain heat, it can sustain um, uh, pressure. So they're, they're, they're very strong metals. They're the same kind of metals that would be used in an oven itself. And so they're actually designed to sustain that heat. So we have to look very carefully and make sure we're using the right materials when we're building our robots. And when you guys build your robots today, you want to think about what kind of materials you want to use so that your robot will not get injured. So for the pizzas you make, do you just make regular pizzas? Or do you make like special pizzas, so like gluten-free, dairy-free? So one of my favorite pizzas on the menu happens to be a gluten-free pizza. That's really important to us because there's so many people who observe diets that require them not to eat wheat. And so that's one of these kind of times when we looked at what the customer needs and thought about what the customer needs first and then tried to create products like that. And I think you're next. <laughs> um, when, how old were you when you had the first pizza? When I ate my first pizza? Yeah. When you had Zoom. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm 39 years old now, and I founded Zoom when I was 37 years old. So that was my first Zoom pizza. But I've been eating pizza for as long as, as, long as I've had teeth. <laughs> I'm going to go to you and then to you. Yeah. That's so interesting. You know, there is, um, there's a company called Boston Dynamics that has created a robot that has a very similar body to a dog and does some pretty special jobs. So there are some robots are out there that are already kind of in the shapes of dogs. We're kind of more focused on robots that are, that are better at making food. <laughs> Yes. Do you have to be at home? So 50% so of your question, the answer is yes, I have thought about it. The other 50, no. So I am currently looking at how to use the robots that we've designed um, to do other jobs for other food companies. I haven't looked as closely at robots that could work inside of your home. My robots are big, and they need a lot of space, and they actually have to be caged in, because if they hit you, they would knock you all the way to Mountain View. Um, but that's an interesting, that's a really interesting, what we'd call a use case, and something that maybe in the future I could think about how to use my technology for, for the home. Let's do you want to do one more question, and then do the workshop? Oh, with two more questions. Yeah. Um, I have two robot dogs. What do they do? Um, one has lots of tricks, and the other has a leash, and they can like, walk. Oh, my so, gosh. I've, I've done like, a little like, robotics. You've done your own robotics? That's, I want to be your partner for the activity today. <laughs> All the way in the last row. Hi. I think as many as we've got time for today. Yeah. Cool. So do you want to try to go, go into yeah, the activity? Exactly. Great. So something you guys know about entrepreneurs or dreamers or innovators or founders is we're always thinking about what's next. And so I love Zoom Pizza. But when I'm not thinking about Zoom, I'm thinking about creating the restaurant of the future. What would we eat in the restaurant of the future? How would we order? What would it look like? And so I want your help today in designing the restaurant of the future. So think you can start even by thinking about, well, what's your favorite restaurant? Do you have one? Which one? The counter's pretty awesome, and they have cool technology. So one of the things I love about the counter is you can make it how you want it. It's customizable. So that might be something that you're inspired by when you're creating the restaurant of the future is what if you could design anything? Yeah. 
So that's kind of what we want to do today is what, your, what the restaurant of the future would look like. And then the second thing is a robot that you might use in that restaurant of the future. So maybe it's a robot that helps you to take orders. Maybe it's a robot that helps you deliver food to the table. So that's kind of what we're going to do today. Yeah, so maybe uh, you can break up into groups of two or three. And um, we'll do the activity. There's some supplies. So if you want to build a robot, um, you can do that as well. And then we'll just share at the end. So why don't you break off into groups of two or three? Question. Can you work yourself? Oh, of course. Sure. Yeah. Can you have some yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> you can work in groups of how many are. She's going to, Julia's going to give you some ideas on how you can make it better, so we'll just take some volunteers. Okay, why don't you start? You can come up here. Hey! Hi. <laughs> so, um, at first I had a robot, and it's kind of like a cube, and you type in whatever food you want, and then it will produce that food and then serve it to you and like you kind of added on to the idea and then we could make a dome robot and there are many levels and like on each level there could also be tables and so basically it makes whatever food you want it to and it can serve it to you and it's really efficient because it, t it would take less time and people don't have to walk and to get the food to you so yeah. I love this idea because I feel like it's solving a lot of problems. One is, with her robot, it has infinite variety, literally like anything you can imagine eating, this yeah. robot can produce. And two, have you ever been at a restaurant and you're waiting a long time for your server to come back and forth to the table? This eliminates that pain point. And then she started with a, with a four-sided robot, but then realized if she created a sphere, she could have infinite number of sides, meaning she could have many more tables that she could serve. So I think it's, this is a really good idea. And also something else to make it even more efficient is that we could make the robot run off of its own energy and like a perpetual motion robot. And like that hasn't really been invented yet, but it would be really hard to make it, but maybe it could work. It could so definitely yeah. work. That's awesome. This is my creation and, um, and it's a spaghetti maker. It's supposed to um, grab the spaghetti from one bullet and then turn over, pour the spaghetti into the other bullet. And then? And then, since I haven't made the sauce robot yet, but after the sauce comes the one that gives the spaghetti to me, she puts that on to the people, and when the people are done, that guy brings it over to this guy who watches the bullet, and then the bullet can start all over again. This is so cool. One of the things that makes me so annoyed when I go to a fast food restaurant is all of the garbage and the boxes that get thrown away. And I just don't understand why they don't make everything in the restaurant reusable. But with your design, you can make everything reusable. The bowls start at the beginning of the production line. They go all the way through. The customer consumes. And then they come back, and she starts the process all the way over again, because this robot actually takes the dirty spaghetti bowls and cleans them and brings them back to the front. So this is a great way to create a zero-waste restaurant. But the robot doesn't bring it get to the other robot. He puts it on a contraption line that brings it to the other one. Even smarter, she has this conveyor line where the bull can just travel on the conveyor line to the other robot. That's so cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Great job. We're basically, it's like a square kind of bar area, except instead of the bartenders in the middle, it's the robots that make the burgers. And so you can watch the process as it's happening. And then the burger doesn't have to go through waiters and orders. You just um, 
put in your order to the middle, and then they give it back to you. This is a really cool idea because one of the things I love when I go to a restaurant is to have fun and to be entertained. And I actually like to see the process of my food being made. And with your design, the customers can see the whole process start to finish. So I think that just creates a lot of magic and a lot of fun in the dining experience. I would love to come to your restaurant. <laughs> nice job. everything and a lot of food ends up getting wasted so you can make a machine where the food that gets wasted instead of throwing it away goes into the machine and makes new food. I think this is amazing. So much of I think not only does food get wasted at restaurants but it gets wasted even just in the production process and if we could recycle or reutilize all the food that's wasted we could probably reduce hunger in most areas of the world. So I think this is absolutely, I wish I could take this idea right now and put it into my own business and maybe I should just hire you. <laughs> Great job. Okay, well, in that case, I wanted to ask you a couple more questions. Like, as I saw the girls doing the activities, I was just wondering, you know, coming up with a new idea and prototyping something new takes a lot of confidence and a lot of courage. So what role did confidence play in your success? So, you know, confidence is something that I think you always are working on and building. Um, one of the things that gives me a lot of confidence is surrounding myself with supportive people. So I've had the same best friends for most of my life, and I really... Um, lean on my friends, especially during times when I might be feeling a little bit doubtful. So I think the power of friendship is really important. In terms of like, I don't know, giving yourself the confidence to dream and think about new ideas, I love this idea of having a thought partner. So a thought partner might be somebody who's not necessarily your best friend, not necessarily in your family, not necessarily a teacher, but it's somebody who you just really admire the quality of their thinking and the way that they approach new problems. Yeah. And sometimes your thought partner is somebody very different than you, somebody from another country, somebody you know who's a different age. And so I think as you're thinking about kind of how your academic life is going to unfold or what you want to do for work, Always be looking for thought partners, people that you can collaborate with and bounce ideas off of. And is there any challenge that you faced where you felt like you weren't confident or you didn't have the courage to do something? Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of times in my life, I've been the only, right? A lot. There are a lot of times when I'm the only black person in the room. There are a lot of times when I'm the only women, woman in the room. There are a lot of times when I'm the youngest, not so much anymore, <laughs> when I'm the youngest person in the room. And you know, those are times when you, even somebody who's really confident and strong, it can kind of psych you out a little bit. You know, because you wonder, do I belong here? Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to be here? And I think, you know, in those moments, you just have to almost go even deeper inside yourself and just coach yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and tell yourself, I am strong, I am worthy, I belong here, I am smart, you know, and I think um, just because you find yourself in a moment where you have a little bit of a lack of confidence, it doesn't mean you're not a confident person, you know, we are always growing, we are always becoming more and more strong as we grow, yeah. and so another thing I would say is just try not to beat yourself up. Try not to be so hard on yourself if you're finding those moments where you feel a little bit less than your most confident self. That's good advice for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so harsh on myself. Yeah, you know, I get that. I think a lot of people who are high achievers, um, can be, we can be very hard on ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, it's advice that I've gotten from people, especially women that I really admire, is to just like be a little nicer to yourself. And if everything's not perfect, it's actually okay. It's okay to fail. It's okay to build a prototype and it collapses. It's okay to start with a cube and then turn it into a sphere. Like all of these little steps along the way actually contribute to, I think, a better future, a better outcome. 
but you have to forgive yourself. You have to be nice to yourself because sometimes you're going to fall down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my robots are going to take the pizza and throw it across the <laughs> restaurant. Sometimes I'm going to get to somebody's door with a pizza and they ordered a pepperoni and I brought a mushroom. You know, these mistakes happen. And the quicker you can pick yourself up and keep going, the, the better off you are. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Again Thank for you. Coming. Thank you for spending the day with me. of applause to Manath. You are incredible. And to all the parents and the, um, you know, special friends in the room who brought your families here, thank you for letting them spend the afternoon with me. This was really a treat. I appreciate it.